Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Tony here with Sparkfun Electronics and today I'm going to be helping you through the tutorial of the Simon Surface Mount Device Kit. Comes with some hardware, two bigger pieces outside of the bag, and everything else will be inside this bag. There's no replacement parts, so try not to lose anything. And then it comes with your PCB and surface mount is a lot like PTH in a lot of ways, but it's a little bit cleaner and you can fit stuff on both sides of the PCB better so it's a lot more popular in the electronics world. The most important thing in your kit is going to be your instruction manual. Follow it as carefully as you can because there's a lot of very important steps that are easy to mess up. So you'll open up your instruction book. First couple of things you'll notice is that a few of the components are highlighted in yellow. Those components are going to be polarized, but we'll get to that later. One of the other things to be careful of when you're populating the board is that there's a bottom and a top side. So when you look at the top of your instructions, it'll say bottom or top. That's very important. So the first thing you want to do when you're soldering a surface mount component is get something, some solder on the board to hold the component in, the pla in place while you solder the rest of the legs. So you can pick one pad, and just tack a little bit of solder onto it. And pick up your component with your tweezers, heat that solder back up, and move the component into it. And then from there, you can use both hands with the soldering iron and the solder to solder the rest of the legs. The first piece in our instructions is the NCP 1400 DC to DC step up motor. It has three pads on, or three legs on one side and two legs on the other. So all you have to do is line up the legs with the pads on the board. Next component on our list is the 22 micro Henry inductor. It's somewhat similar to the NCP as it only has two pads and no polarity. So all you have to do is line up the pads on your component with the pads on the board. One of the tricks with this component is that the pads are underneath it and there's no pad showing on the side of the component. So one of the easiest ways that I've found to get it onto the board is to apply a lot of solder to one of the pads to give you a lot to work with and make it easier to do the second one. The next component is the MBRA140 diode. This is the first polarized component in the list, so you want to be extra careful with it. You look very carefully at it, it's going to have a line across one side of the component, and that's going to match up with the line on the silk screen of the PCB. The soldering technique with this is very similar to the inductor. You're just going to apply a lot of solder to one pad, push it as far into it as you can, and then do the other one. All right, the next component in our list is a 47 microfarad capacitor. This is also polarized and it has a very similar polarity marking. It's going to have a white side on one side of the component that's going to line up with the curved silk screen on the board. And again, with this one, a similar technique, a lot of solder on one pad, pushing as far in as you can. So when you're doing the second pad on a lot of these components, it's best, I think, to do it however you find is best for you. But one of the things you can try is putting your solder in between the pad on the component and the board, and then just pushing up against it with your iron until it melts. Next component on our list is a 10 microfarad capacitor. This component is also polarized and has similar marking, white on one side, and the rest of it should be black with a few numbers on it. Same as the 47 microfarad, there's going to be a curve in the silk screen that's going to line up with your white side of the component.
Now as we proceed to the top side, the components that go on the top side are actually going to be soldered on the bottom side. So as long as you follow instructions carefully, you should be alright. First thing we're going to do is the power switch. And since it's just a slide switch, it doesn't matter which way you put it in, as long as you put it in on the top side. Once you get one of the legs soldered to the board, you can go ahead and take a look at the other side and make sure your switch is all the way pressed against the board and looks nice and pretty. Next we have our battery clips. These are marked as polarized components because they have to face inward so they can hold the battery on the board. You might have to give them a little bit of a shove as the holes are pretty tight together. And again, just like the slide switch, the components are going to be placed on the top, but the solder joints are going to be made on the bottom. When you're soldering down the battery clips, make sure you fill the holes in all the way to make a good connection. So at the bottom of this page, you'll see a big important. What you're going to do now is find yourself a battery and a multimeter, and you're going to test for shorts to ground on the board to make sure everything is functioning properly thus far. So what you're going to do is place your battery between your battery clips, power your board, set your multimeter to continuity. You're going to test on the bottom of the board, there should be a ground and a 5 volt right next to each other. If you don't hear any sound, you are ready to proceed. If you hear this, go back and check the polarity of your components and all your solder joints. So now we're going to go back to the bottom side of the board. And now that you have your battery clips in the board, it's going to sit very uneven. Anything you can find to help keep the board level is going to be good. I took one of these standoffs out of my hardware, put them through the wrong side of the board to help keep it level. So the next component in the list is a microcontroller. This is also polarized. It's going to have a small dot in one of the corners, and you're going to line that up with the dot on the silk screen of the board. So this component is going to be by far the most difficult one in your surface mount device kit. A few tricks that I've learned are going to help you through this a little bit better. So the first thing you're going to do is tack down one side of the microcontroller and then the opposing side to keep it straight on the pins while you start to solder. So after you get your first legs tacked down, before you start on the second one, make sure that your pins are lined up with your pads. One of the ways you can proceed to solder down this IC is by going one pin at a time. There you go. <laughs> now, as you go, you might see that you will eventually get two pins soldered together. It's not a problem, it's very easy to fix. Which brings us to the second method, which is a little bit faster at first, but does require some cleanup. So instead of going pin by pin, you can just solder all the way across and they'll all bridge together and then clean it up after the fact. So now that you've made a giant mess of your IC trying to save time, you get to go through the cleanup. The cleanup is fairly easy. You're going to take what we call a soldering wick, and you're going to hold it down where you have pins jumpered together, heat it up with your iron, and the wick is going to get very hot, so if you don't feel like burning your fingers, you might want to find something to grab it with. And as it gets hot, you're going to see the solder actually flow into the wick. Once you start to see that, Pull the wick away with the soldering iron as to keep it hot, otherwise it'll get stuck to your board. Then you're just going to repeat that same process for the other three sides of your IC. Next we're going to do our 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So there's going to be three strips of white tape. Two of them are going to be in sets of three, one of them is going to be a set of six. One of your sets of three is just going to be a small gray component with no writing on it. That's your capacitor. So find that and pull out two of the three because that's all you're going to need. 
So as you follow your instructions, the arrows are a little bit hard to follow, but if you look at your board, there's going to be on the silk screen, it will say 0.1 microfarad or 0.1 UF. Next is going to be the 10K resistor. This is also going to be in a package of three, but you're only going to need one. They're going to be small and black with little yellow writing on them. Again, look on your silk screen on your board for where it says 10K. All right, next is going to be the 330 ohm resistor. And you're going to be extra careful on this page because there's going to be 330 ohms and LEDs. The 330s are going to go on the bottom, the LEDs are going to go on the top as a through hole. So your 330 ohm, same thing. It's going to say 330 on the silk screen. There's going to be four of them even though you have a package of six. These are also going to be small and black with a little bit of writing on them. So next you're going to do your four LEDs. These are also a polarized component and these are one of the most difficult to find the polarity on. So on the LED there's going to be mostly round and then one flat side. The flat side might be hard to see so it might be easier to just feel for it. And then the flat side on your LED is going to line up with the flat side on the silk screen. Again these are going to be on the top of the board with solder joints on the bottom side. So one way to hold the LEDs in place is to bend your legs on the other side so they can't fall through the board. I like to tack down one of the legs, but either way works just fine. Once you have them held in place with your preferred method, check on the top side of your board to make sure that they're flush with the board. If they're flush, then you can go back over and solder the rest of the legs down. So after you have your LEDs soldered in place, you can find something to cut the leads with. Where you're going to cut them is just above the solder joint you've made as to not weaken the joint. And now you're ready for the sound switch. The sound switch is going to work just like the power switch but on the opposite side of the board where it says sound. The last thing you're going to surface mount solder is going to be the buzzer. It's fairly easy to line up as its odd shape will line up with the shape on the silk screen. All right, now you're onto the home stretch, which is probably one of the easiest parts of the entire assembly. You're going to take this white button pad this black bezel, it's going to go on top of the button pad with these little grooves in the sides on top for the screws to go through. You're going to place your screw through these holes and then tighten them down with the standoff on the other side. You won't need a screwdriver for this. Do the same for all four screws and make sure not to tighten down your button pad too hard. On the back of the Simon, or the bottom, you'll see there's these pins. These are for programming with use of an FTDI. All you have to do is align your voltage and your ground pins. The other pins on the back are analog for attachment of sensors. And don't forget about the tips and hints on the back of the manual. And there you go, you've completed your Simon surface mount soldering kit.